and we have a full house tonight. <clears throat> and I guess everybody's here for our uh, key topic here, which is an update from CHA Engineering. And just as a, a little reminder for everybody too, this is not a full-on public hearing. This is really just an update from the gentleman at CHA on where we stand with the project now. There's going to be, I'm sure, plenty of opportunities for more public hearing. But um, this will be good to get an update on where we stand with the project if people have questions and things like that. So we'll try to keep it um, focused and everything, at least also, too, so that we ha if we have fo uh, follow-up homework or anything like that for the next time we want to get together on it, we'll try to, try to be concise on that. Um, and then we're, and if we're tr I, we want to make sure everybody gets their questions in, but try to stay focused to them. Just make sure we're not re-asking the same questions. We, we, all do, we all do that sometimes, you know, slightly differently. So if, they, if those do come up. So um, with that, unless anybody has any initial questions, I'll turn it over to you guys to get rolling. Yeah. So you want to just give us a quick, like, recap on all where right. you were before? Or? Sure, thank you. Uh, my name is John Morgan with CHA Consulting. As you uh, may know, that uh, CHA is the design consultant for this project. We're working for the town of Sunderland. Um, the project is being reconstructed through the program, um, Transportation Improvement Program, uh, which is state and federal construction funding. And the project, because it's being funded with state money, <coughs> the uh, Mass DOT is responsible for approving the design of the project and they'll also be responsible for construction of the project once we get to that point and, and the project's ready to go out to construction they will do the bidding and the construction oversight. Um, with, me, with, with me here today is uh, Kevin Thatcher from our office as well. Um, so today I just wanted to kind of give an overview of where we're at in the process. Um, talk a little bit about what the 25% um, design submittal that we made back in April included, and also give you an update on some of the comments and feedback we've gotten from MassDOT so far. They have reviewed our submittal and issued a few comments. Um, so <coughs> this project involves uh, reconstruction of all of uh, of, of North Main Street, starting at Route 116 and continuing north approximately three quarters of a mile to uh, Claybrook um, Road. So the the project includes um, all of the the goal of the project is to uh, <coughs> rehabilitate the roadway and make complete streets improvements, which include. Uh, improvements for all roadway users, bicycles, pedestrians, and vehicles. And we are currently um, at the 25% design level. So we've had uh, the project design began back in 2015. The, the design started and we had several public outreach meetings. Several alternatives were discussed um, at those, those meetings. and. Uh, back in October of uh, 2016, we received direction from the Board of Selectmen as to which alternative to proceed with, and that's what is shown here on the plans today. Uh, these, the, the design that was selected uh, was to go with a reconstruction of the existing roadway, which is approximately 26 feet wide. Uh, so it would be reconstructed to the same width. And we would be installing a shared use bicycle path on the, um, on the west side of the roadway. This uh, shared use path would be eight feet wide, is what, was our, what we proposed. It was, uh, would ex begin, uh, just north of the parking area um, in front of the restaurants and the library. Um, and just <coughs> north of School Street. So the shared use path would begin there and we continue up and end at uh, Claybrook. The, between uh, where the path begins and Route 116, 
we would have a on-the-road bicycle lane to continue the bicycle accommodations um, to the intersection. The, the, we would also have a sidewalk on the uh, east side, which would be located in approximately the same location <coughs> as the sidewalk is today. So we would be just reconstructing that sidewalk. Um, that sidewalk is currently narrow. We would be widening it to five feet wide, which is the Mass DOT stand. Uh, I believe the sidewalk is approximately four feet wide today. So those are the, uh, the main improvements we're looking to make. Um, there are several improvements at some of the crosswalks and crossings. At each of the crosswalks on, on North Main Street, we're looking to add a uh, rapid flashing beacon where the engineer can push a button and there will be a sign and the, there'll be a flashing yellow light when that button is pushed. Um, so that will improve safety for pedestrians crossing the roadway. We're also looking at making some improvements at North Silver Lane. Um, we were looking to uh, get rid of the Triangular Island at the at the end of the road, where um, the the vehicles currently split on either side of that island, um, and just have a standard uh, T intersection there. Um, some of the other improvements we're looking to make would include uh, drainage improvements. Um, there's a lot of old clay pipe that's in poor condition that needs to be replaced. Uh, so that's uh, being proposed. Uh, we'll be putting in new catch basins where it's needed to drain the proposed design. Uh, and we'd be looking to make sign and pavement marking improvements throughout uh, to uh, improve safety. And one of the key things we're trying to do is try to protect and limit impact to trees. Uh, that's very important on this, this scenic roadway. A lot of mature trees, as you know. And the current design that we had submitted for 25% um, had estimated only uh, two of these mature individual trees would have to be removed. Uh, So that's a little bit of an overview of what the project included. Uh, the Mass DOT had come back with this, uh, several, they have, each of their sections of Mass DOT comes back with review comments, their traffic section, their highway section, their right of way section, pavement section. So we get a lot of comments back from Mass DOT. Some of the key comments that they came back with were, they would like to see the path be, the shared use path be wider than what we had proposed. We had proposed eight feet. They would like to see it at 10 feet wide. Uh, eight feet is their absolute minimum according to their guide and you have to have strong justification. We thought we did have strong justification to try to protect the trees and that's something that we will obviously have to discuss with Mass DOT further uh, to try to Justify that. We looked at what would it what would it entail what would happen if we did try to widen this path to 10 feet, and we see that an additional 12 between 12 and 20 additional trees would be impacted trying to widen it to to uh, 10 feet. So we we think we have a good justification not to widen <coughs> the path any further. Um, they also came back with some comments about the uh, providing handicap parking as part of the, in the parking area, designated some spaces for handicap parking. So that's something we'll be discussing with the town. Um, they came back with a comment that uh, what we have is, is that we have proposed a five foot buffer between the, the, the uh, shared use path and the roadway on the west side. So there'd be a green space of five feet of, of grass in between the, the shared use path and the roadway. Mass DOT came back with a comment that they'd like to see us put in a swale in there for drainage. Um, it's not wide enough for a swale, uh, so they suggested moving the path further from the road, which would impact more trees. So we're going to have to push back on that as well. That you know, swales are nice for drainage, but it just doesn't fit here. So we we'll have to further discuss that with Mass DOT as well. Push. We'll have to push back. Um, and then. They also got, uh, we've got some comments on the pavement design, so they suggested that 
Uh, we increase the amount of pavement we're going to be putting back. I don't think that's a, a, a big issue. It's going to increase the cost of the project, but it's not an increase in the cost of the town because the state is paying for it. Um, it would, we had proposed in some areas doing a mill and overlay with one course of pavement. They suggested doing a structural overlay throughout the two courses of pavement. Uh, we had proposed just trying to address the, the areas where the pavement is <coughs> poor condition with some deeper pavement, but they want to do all of it. I don't see that as a problem. I think that's something that uh, um, should be a benefit to the project. Is that digging up and then repaving? Similar um, to what we did on South Main probably a few years back? It's, the, the structural overlay, they still would just mill off the so top a couple of inches and then they put two courses on top of that instead of one. Okay. Hmm. Can you clarify yes. one thing? Sure. With the new shared use um, eight or ten foot path on the west side, does the existing sidewalk on the west side go away or remain? Uh, the existing sidewalk on the west side would go away. So the, the sidewalk that's set uh, back from the road would actually be taken out and planted new grass back there. So the, that would, uh, because the pedestrians would share, would have their, act, their accessibility using the shared use path, so we don't need two sidewalks or two pedestrian pathways on the same side of the street. I think one of the reasons a lot of us are here tonight is that we didn't realize that roadway improvements was going to entail a major change to the look of North Main Street. Um, and so uh, a lot of us are here hoping that we can go back to your initial preferred design alternative, which was far less intrusive and change uh, changes less. North and South Main Street should be viewed together and whatever happens on North Main should happen on South Main and this this solution is completely inappropriate for South Main and I think also at North Main um, it is very uh, disruptive to the historic uh, street green so Sunderland, Northfield, uh, Deerfield, Hatfield, uh, Hadley all in the 18th century were laid out with a linear street green with a road and a street green on the side They've been preserved everywhere and are really defining elements for the National Register Historic District that both North and South Main have. So there's a lot of concern among the folks we've brought here tonight that this solution, I think it feels like it's solving problems we don't have. Um, what we have is one of the best pedestrian experiences you can possibly have being set <coughs> Set back from the road, hugging the houses rather than being near the road. Um, we've got beautiful trees. What the problems we have are that people drive too fast on both North and South Main. There's no accommodation for through traffic bicyclists, of which I think it's fair to say there are thousands in a year. And uh, our sidewalks need to be fixed. Those are our problems. I don't feel that the shared use path solves those problems appropriately. And just to add one more thing to that, it doesn't look like the through town cyclists are going to use that shared use path. I don't see 30 cyclists popping off to that shared use path to, to keep going through town. Well, and <clears throat> And if you have 30 cyclists on the shared use path, then you don't want to be walking. <coughs> right? I agree with that. that. That becomes a problem when you go from the shared use path to regular 47, where you've got 30 bicyclists now trying to get across 47 sure. to get back onto the road that they have to travel on. And their regulation, they're regulated by, our, by the same regulation as vehicles. So those people will not be riding on it. Occasional recreational riders may ride on it, but I don't know if you've done traffic studies or foot, foot traffic studies on this, but that's typically what happens before a project starts. There's not all that kind of you know, use for recreational bicyclists. Not as much as there used to be anyway. Now, do you have a, pl a plan for the rest of your presentation as far as what you want to go through? Or um, just, I, mean, I, I, think, see how I think other than just talking about what the next steps in the process are, okay. I, I covered most of it. Okay. Can I ask about the 
standard design requirements and the exceptions we have asked for already. If we were going to go straight down the DOT list, this project would look radically different anyway, correct? Yeah, I mean, the original design that we were looking at was to uh, widen the roadway so that we'd have shoulders on the roadway for the bicycles, which Mass DOT's minimum shoulder width is five feet to accommodate bicycles. So you need 11 foot travel lanes and five foot shoulders. Your total pavement width of the road would be uh, 32 feet wide. So grow by 10 plus feet. So right now it's about 26. Right. So it would be it would be six feet wider than it is today. That's, and then as part of that design, we were going to reconstruct both of the existing sidewalks on, on each side. That was the original design. Um, Thank you. And, and if I recall, just one second. I think one of the problems here is, is we ha I've heard everybody complain about speed. We also need to accommodate bicyclists because we all know that we had to, we just said we have thousands, and anybody who goes up and down can see that. So one of the challenges with this project is those two things are kind of like diametrically opposed in one way because, in order to accommodate bicyclists on the road, that is going to potentially increase speeders. So that's one of the challenges of this project is to, and it is it is a challenge to accommodate all, you know, we want to maintain our trees, the, the historic look, and fix the infrastructure. Because this also isn't just about sidewalks, it's about the infrastructure of the road itself uh, and the piping and things like that underneath it. So there's a lot of elements in here, and, and we have gone back and forth a lot over these. So it, it's definitely a challenging project, and you've got two opposing interests and that are creating a lot of tension in between them Do, yes I actually don't think they're necessarily opposing interests and we have also found several uh, submissions to DOT district one that have been approved with a cut with design exceptions on lane width on bicycle lane width and on sidewalk width so I think that if we want to uh, I think that we should come up with the solution that really works and then push for the exceptions that make that solution more palatable. Um, we have a few slides that just are, I think, are better illustration of what the result of this is to the pedestrian, to the experience as you're on the street. Um, I think these drawings are very hard to read. So if you don't mind, if we could just run through them quickly. Um, I mean, I think to start with, the, as Liz said, the experience of North and South Main Street is the experience of walking away from the traffic under the canopy of the mature trees. Um, we know we have a complete streets um, policy, and that in the policy that you guys, that were, was uh, adopted by the town, that the uh, character of the village and the neighborhood is supposed to be uh, one of the things that is considered. Um, at least I think that I would say my priorities I'll speak for Liz and I'd let everyone else decide what they think that you know these are the things that are important in addition to the infrastructure which obviously we you know is going ahead is that North and South Main Street are considered as regardless of the timing and the source of funding it's one design um, that the retention of the historic character of the linear green the proportion of green space and the accommodation of pedestrian and light bicycle traffic away from the road is important, that we preserve the trees, that we try to calm the traffic, and that we improve safety for road cyclists. Um, this whole idea of the town green, it's not something we dreamed up. This is a DCR publication. That, that's the, that's the uh, quote on the right that talks about the history of the green, in, uh, the linear green in towns like ours. Northfield, Williamstown, Hadley, Sunderland, and Hatfield. This is the existing conditions. So, you know, if you're walking down north or south Main Street, you go from the house, the green space, the pedestrian under the tree, some more green space, and then the cars, and repeat it on the other side. Um, your, this is your proposal, taking that your original 14 foot uh, on the right hand side, that's the 14 foot. Use, mixed use path, I've tried to cut it down to eight, which means one guy is out of the picture. Um, and, uh, you know, what I think that uh, the perception, if you are walking, first of all, you're clo you and your kids and their tricycles are close to the road, it's a totally different experience. And 
the perception of the paved surface is basically the entire road plus that eight feet. So now you have given up a huge amount of space to uh, what is going to feel like paved surface. Um, in your original alternative four, which is this proposal, uh, when you had the 14-foot shared use path, you were talking about taking down 19 shade trees. So I acknowledge that uh, with the 8-foot path, you seem to have cut that way back. But uh, the loss of shade trees, we have worked extremely hard to care and retain the shade trees. It's a huge endeavor, and it's something that the residents of North and South Main Street are personally invested in. Um, if you compare the the existing to what you're proposing, you can see the, diff uh, the difference in the amount of paving. I don't know, someone want to kind of point that out, the overall kind of paved uh, area is. So this is the existing paved area up here. Uh, so it's got 11 foot lanes and two foot shoulders, so it's 26 feet wide here, and four foot sidewalks. And then, um, <coughs> Proposed, uh, current proposed design. So you have the same 26 feet paved here, and then you have the shared use path, which is eight feet, and then you, we have a five foot sidewalk on this side. So there is additional five feet of pavement. Okay, but your perception is gonna be that 32 feet on the road, the five feet plus the eight feet as, as a kind of what does that add up to? 40, not 40 uh, something foot experience of pavement. Can you go back one slide there where you had the trees? The removal? For but, second, please. Yeah. Uh, you're saying removal of 19 trees? That's in your report. That's in the CHA report, alternative 4B. Is that in the current proposal? No. Well, he, he just said that with an eight foot path, we'd only lose two shade trees. Okay. So we're just rehashing yeah. yes. prior. Yeah. Right well, that's the that's the information that had been distributed. Okay. Um, I want to clarify. So, I think uh, an alternative that we'd like to propose is going back to your original, the what the the alternative one, which was the one that you had proposed to the town, um, and we think that actually the case you made for alternative one made a lot of sense that it was. Uh, uh, it was the best, you, you, this is your words, it's the best option for the town um, to provide five foot shoulders for bicycle use along the roadway, increasing the total pavement width to 32, providing sidewalks in the same general area as it would yield the fewest impacts to features such as trees, utility poles, uh, and outside the edge of the roadway. And I'd like to propose that we even go further and look at design exceptions that might take the lane, lane width down to 10.5, which might slow traffic, the bike shoulder maybe down to three or four if we can do it, and the sidewalks to possibly four and a half. In front of my house, they're four foot three right now. Um, so that's, the, that's what we would like to suggest um, with a marked bike lane on the road for the road cyclists. I mean, unless I, we just haven't, encountered any road cyclists who said they were going to be on the, sh on the shared use path. Um, that's the comparison, so it's a very minor change. Um, Will, you want to do these? Sure. So that's up, uh, uh, I think it's 110 uh, in North Main Street, so just north of uh, School Street, kind of across from Demo. It's looking north. And so you can see the sidewalk on the left, and then the road's on the right, and I'm standing about where the shared use path would be. And you can, you know, you can see the little sort of uh, nothing can grow there, shoulder. I'm sorry, I don't can, see Can that. I ask a question? Yep. Um, bicyclers, do, do, when you ride up and down north, Main, or north or south Main Street, do you feel safe on the present road? Yes. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all? I, 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 it's I, Would you ride on the shared youth path for three quarters of a mile? Uh, my, my much preferred option would be, I think what you're calling here, the original option one, where you have a decent bike shoulder. It doesn't need to be full five feet, but it's, and, and then you're riding, on, you're riding with the traffic. Um, you're not on this plan here, you're having a cross North Main, if you're riding northbound, you got to cross North Main twice. I agree. 
Mm. Okay. Um, I mean, it, that strikes me as ridiculous, but you need something better than what we've got now because now the, diff the you know you've got this much between the white line and the if you have it. Yeah. I, and, and for me, and, and for me, and and, and I, I that that was my first question. Went back. Thank you, Peter. Um, it is is I I don't believe we have it. What what's there now is not safe. No. I, I I never believed it was safe since I've been here a long time. I've never thought it was safe for, it was, I always felt safe as a pedestrian, but as a bicycle, um, I can't tell you how many times Joe Sadasi came up behind me and said, where's your light, Tom? Um, because he almost ran into me. That being said, I, 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 I would hope, you know, when we have to come up with what a, what a safe width is, I think, first for, for our bikes so that we can share the road. And, and please understand, that's what it's all about. It's so, it's, n it's for vehicles, it's for pedestrians, and it's for bikes. All, all users, not just one user over the other. That, that's the main goal. So I, somebody's gonna help me with what's a proper width for the road, or the bike path first. 10 and a, 10 and a half feet on a road, it's fine for my car. Um, but I know people that drive double wide snowmobile trailers that stick out, they're probably good eight and a half, nine mm -hmm. feet wide. And I know we have, we're still an agricultural society or our community. And we have, when, when, when we have, when we have a, a set of harrows going, or a set of plows, a, a seven bottom plow going down the road, they're over 10 feet. So I wouldn't think a 10 foot road would be safe at that point. I, my understanding is that you can do 10.5, whether that's good for us or not is another issue. And I'm, I think we're just trying to show what some alternatives might yeah. be. Yeah, because we are a right to farm down too, so that's an important thing. So, so Mass DOT's minimum for this type of road is 11. Anything below that will require a design <coughs> exception from them. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're in, we, I got no problem with design exceptions. <laughs> and, and again, for me. Yeah. You, so we'd have you. I, I, a, I, I hope everybody understand that starting five years ago, we, we've had the same. We've come a long way from where we were five years ago, and we, we've had the same conversations about, you know, who's going to cross over the road. And I think it was Gary, Gary Greer probably said, you know, most bicyclists aren't going to cross from one side to go over. They're going to stay on the road. We all know that. Um, uh, and and the other thing is is we we've, we've been trying to say I think John heard us a million times the most important thing to to us our board has been and the people that have been here has been traffic calming ways to slow cars down because that that to what I think that is more of a problem than the with with the road. Mm -hmm. So then if the road bicyclists are going to stay on the road but we don't accommodate them and we create this shared use path that. The tricyclists don't even like because now our kids are next to the road when they used to be up on the sidewalk. Who exactly did we build it for? I, so, I mean, there's... Well, this is one of the issues, too, though, is as I recall from past meetings, there has been distinct opposition to increasing the width of the road. Mm -hmm. So, and this gets back to my point. That's in opposition to increasing the width of the road for the safety of bikers. So we need to figure out a way to balance that out, we're, we're getting to still, that. Yeah. and still give do us that. a chance. We haven't gotten to our last slide. So, okay. so this this slide is the same same scene, and the photoshopped in is the eight foot wide path, and it's five feet set back from the edge of the pavement. And by the way, when I went out and flagged it and measured it, um, you know I haven't changed the, the the road at all, but I got I got a, a width in a couple of places from the middle of the center line to the edge of the pavement of about 13 and a half to 13 feet 5 inches to 13 feet 8 inches. So I was getting a result of around 27 feet across the road at some point. I mean I'm just, but I'm just you know was out there measuring that. So that's why that's a preface to the next slide then. Oh, by the way, I did Photoshop out the <coughs> sidewalk too, so there's no sidewalk over there. But I think this also shows that if you're on that shared use path just off the road, that what you feel like is that you're on a huge paved, you know, as landing strip. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a comparison of 
what we have now with the protected sidewalk to the side away from the road and the shared use path adjacent to the road with the perception of one large paved area and pedestrians and the trikes next to the traffic. Um, and so now this one, uh, I extended the pavement about two feet from the edge of the existing macadam. So that would be, you'd, ha you'd have the current, it's currently an 11 foot lane, right? So you'd have an 11 foot lane and so now there's probably, you know, about three feet of extra shoulder. Maybe, you know, maybe, I can't, I don't know how much there was, if it was 11 foot lane and I had 12, I had 13 and a half feet, so I had about, I had say a foot to a foot and a half of pavement over the line and then there's another two feet there of pavement. So that comes out, if you added, I mean if you, we took your <coughs> foot lane and the five foot shoulders, that's a, that's a 32 foot wide road, so it would be wider than that. Um, South Main Street is about 29 feet across and, and, and and a few years ago, Chip Thomas saved us on some pavement by narrowing it down. It used to be 31 feet across. So North Main Street's narrower than South Main Street. We have the same speed limit. The bicyclists do okay on South Main Street, I think. I haven't interviewed any, but boy, they come by in droves on the weekends. So. That's a comparison of the of what we have now and, and basically your your original option with perhaps, you know, narrowing a little bit if we're allowed to and, you know, maybe that could be a bi the bike lane that's painted green and has, of course, all the signage in it so that it's quite obvious that it's meant for bicycles. And we kind of feel like that would accomplish the goals that we had talked about at the beginning. And we would need curbs, I think. I'm, I'm sure you guys have talked about that. But South Main Street has curbs on it and the grass goes right up to the edge of the curb. And North Main Street does, just has the shoulders, no curbs. And you get that wasteland off the road where you can't walk, you can't drive, and you can't ride a bike. Right. And it's, mm -hmm. yeah, you can run. Okay, there you go. You got a nice dirt running pad. You lose. You can run it. We got big, I see a hand back there. Just to follow up what Will said, uh, it was at a historic time. It was in September of 2001. 9-11 period when a new curb was put in on both sides of South Main Street and it took a foot and a half from the new curb back into the green and then all of that was filled in. I know because I had to move, reposition my mailbox. Yeah. Uh, so this, if you just removed all of that new blacktop curb, you would gain almost three feet on South Main Street. And I also have a question and then another comment. Uh, when did you do your survey? When did you do your study? What time of year? Uh, which survey are you talking about? The field survey, where the surveyors go out and actually measure the road conditions or the traffic volumes? or When? When? When during the year? Uh, what, what January through I'd December. I'd have to look survey. back. It was done a couple of years ago. arrive at that schema? My question is directed toward, uh, if you didn't do it during the winter, and this is New England, and I think many of us here recognize that Sunderland seems to get more snow than anywhere around, <laughs> and when the snow plows come down the street, they throw the snow 10, 12 feet from the roadbed into yes. the green area, and they would cover up your common space there for bicycles and if there's anyone walking along there, any child bicycling along there, they're going to be blasted with snow hitting them. And the snow plows could run not just during the night, but also during the day. So I think the major concern here, number one, will be the safety of the individuals who live in Sunderland and for the people who walk and also for our children. And by putting this new common use bike walkway so close to the road will require the town, I don't know if the town can afford to plow the snow from that several times a day if there's a heavy snow to clear it and we also when we are having our driveways plowed that's where we push the snow because we can't put it 
push it into the street. It has to be pushed up into the common area, and it would cover your common walkway. Where the sidewalks are now works perfectly well. So add another six inches and restore them, and you have a perfect solution. Take out that false new curb, and you've got three more feet than South Main Street. It will save a lot of money, and I don't want to hear that this is state money or federal money. That is our tax money. The money comes from us. Yep. It may go into the state coffers, but it's our tax money. And I think, so number one, we're interested in the safety of the people using the street, the bicyclists, and we have to remember that there are two groups of bicyclists. Those who sometimes in the spring, summer, and fall, there may be 20 or 30 or 40 bicyclists coming down the street, and if I want to turn into my driveway, I have to stop on the street and wait till they all go past and the traffic backs up behind me. I think that's a traffic hazard, and it's a hazard for the bicyclists and people rear-ending. It's going to happen, but I'm also concerned about the people who walk, so the pedestrians, the children who are walking to get to school and there's no crosswalk on South Main Street for those who ride their bicycles or walk on the west side and cross over to go to the access road to the grammar school. There's no crosswalk. Can we, yeah, can we address well, actually we the crosswalk? The that's yeah. like, let's, let's talk about that crosswalk actually and try to parse it out a little bit for a minute. Well, I know, but this is all a part and parcel of North Main Street and South Main Street, and we want a uniformity. We want to maintain the character of this town. And so I'm just as concerned about North Main Street as I am about South. Did, were you able to answer? Was he able, it, your, your pointed question about the studies, you had two questions and then you had a, a question about no. when one of them, were you all set with, the, with that question? Yeah. About the studies, okay. Yeah. Another question? <clears throat> At the risk of uh, offering a contrary view, uh, if we're talking about extending this to South, uh, South Main Street, I find it very hard to picture how we're going to improve the existing sidewalk where it is now. There's, right near the corner of my property, the sidewalk curls around a huge tree. Uh, there's no way you're going to widen that without taking out the tree. Um, mm -hmm. As a senior citizen who walks on that in the winter, I can tell you that that sidewalk is in atrocious condition. It is full of low spots that, despite the best efforts of the, the town crew last year to fill them in, uh, there are a lot of icy spots. Uh, I don't know where you're going to widen that to a reasonable size without taking out those trees. And I understand, I don't like the idea of the proposal being just five feet from the, the roadway, but I don't see what you're gonna do on South Main Street to get a decent sized sidewalk that can be plowed properly. Uh, every year I have to replant in front of my property because the plow comes around the tree. And, uh, yeah, the, the roots to the trees are certainly going to be a challenge for reconstructing the sidewalks behind them. Um, and in some cases where the really <coughs> large trees are and the sidewalk is being heaved, we may even have to kind of bump around the tree, which means going onto private property, which means getting a sidewalk easement from, from the, the residents and the property owners. So that's something that will have to be explored if we're is the sidewalk there, material what? going to be asphalt? Yes. We had one question, Wayne. Mm -hmm. I saw a hand way in the yeah, back I, there. I, I don't want you to agree with this gentleman here about the snow plows. Yep. Because I have walked on the sidewalk many times in the winter when they're plowing it and said, thank God we're set so far back because you get you know, slammed with the snow and sand and everything. So that, that's a great point. I hadn't even thought about that. But And, and I know that this project is more, you know, is all about the village, but it seems to me the safety issue with cyclists is is like north of Silver Lane. I've ridden my bike on my Main Street, and you know it's not comfortable. It would definitely be better with a wider shoulder. But the real issue is north of Silver Lane to St. Falls. 
that's that's, uh, yeah. that's the danger. I've, I've heard next project, John. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've heard Peter mention that. You talked about. She mentioned how north of Silver Lane is is really where where that really narrows down to yeah. almost nothing. That right. I mean, you may say there's two foot shoulder now, but yeah. effectively there's none. Right. And especially once the winter hits, at one like that, and then yes. I'm Natalie, I live on North Main, <laughs> um, and we moved to Sutherland uh, in 2005 with a small child and another one on the way, and we moved here because of where the sidewalks were, because there's a huge barrier between our children and the roadway, and that safety feature was very important to us, and I used to work for John Oliver, I want to accommodate bicycles, I feel it's really important, and so if there's a way for us to get to some compromise where we're widening the existing roadway to allow for the groups of 30 to 40 bicyclists that are going up and down our roads so that they can be there safely while also protecting the citizens of Sunderland, that would be an ideal situation. And I think that what you're seeing is that we would all support the town in talking to MassDOT, if we were trying to go for exceptions or anything like that, that you would have our full support. Um, but I certainly want our cyclists to be safe. I think that having them here is a benefit to our economy, which is spectacular. The corner store has great picnic benches now where people can sit and have a snack. Um, so I definitely want them to be safe, but I also want to recognize that this is a family-friendly community and those sidewalks are critically important for children's safety. When I saw the picture of the sidewalk right next to the road, I was like, I would never, ever let my kids go out there on a tricycle, bicycle, anything, walk even. I would never do walk. You get somebody texting, <laughs> you know, I'm never ever. <laughs> Uh, one second, we had a question up. For the pedestrians, particularly the senior pedestrians, um, I, I love bicycling and, uh, and I think we want to make our bicyclists safe. But the idea of being on a pathway with bicycles, I already know, is a dangerous experience because bikes are silent. Not the big packs of bicyclists, but single bikes are silent and they come whizzing past, and I've several times been thrown off balance by it. And the kids are, our kids are great, by the way. When they ride the sidewalk, if you call out, call out from behind, they say, oh, okay. If you say that to some other people I'm not going to name, and they say, well, pay attention. Oh, okay. So I, I don't like the idea of this roadway, but I mean, this pathway, bicycle way, it's dangerous. To yeah, yeah. I, would, I was just going to echo that po the point that about the, because I cycle quite a bit along there, and, and where I get nervous is really after Silver Lane. Because uh, this, you know, the straight shot, people can yeah. see, I mean, it's better. Um, you know, but I'd love to have wider shoulder and all the way to Montague and beyond. Yeah. Um, all the way to 60. So yeah, yep. um, so I think yeah, I would like to see it that way. Yeah, and I, and I don't know Natalie's kids now, but I know when they were younger, I saw how fast they were moving along, and they definitely could have whipped off and gone five feet like in a high blink. So just faster now. Yeah, yeah they're just uh, faster now. Just so, so John, what's what's the minimum? What what are, what's the minimum bike lane width that the state that the state allows? Or uh, Mass DOT's minimum width is five feet. What have you seen them accept with an exception? Um, we, we have seen four foot um, paths. It used to be their standard. Um, they passed their healthy transportation policy, I think, back in 2011. And since that time, it's been five feet. Um, we had some projects that had already started before that where we had four foot shoulders and they were kind of grandfathered in, so they were able to keep their four foot shoulders. Um, so, if I could just stop for one second. So, you're talking, you're saying that we would need 11, 11 foot travel lane, right? Yeah. And you'd have to have a four foot? Five. 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 I'm, I'm, okay. Being optimistic. I, I'm on the optimistic <laughs> side. So, say you go to four inch, so that's 15 feet, so that you're looking at a 30 foot road. Yeah. What so, is it now? What's that? 27. 26, 27. So, so what happens when you leave North Main Street and it 
and we you have go a north. That narrows them yeah. There's just no way you can get. So I mean, in terms of what the DOT requires, yeah. when does that end? When you get, where do they say, oh, we don't care anymore? Because <laughs> at some point, <laughs> north of right. it's right. so really late. you're going you're to run into right. 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 It's going to come down. Period. Right. It's going to change the position back to existing. So if you if we want to use their funds. Uh, right. They're basically uh, telling us you have to follow their design standards. Sure. Right. So, uh, but we just uh, where it ends. You can also do the And I think. Uh, so the well, I think one thing to keep in mind too is although we want to keep a, a cohesive di design between North and South Main, this project it does not address South Main Street. So we need to remember that, even though our wishes are bigger than, and we kind of ended up here based on. Public feedback from before, right. and I know Tom's got something to say. So, so, so <laughs> if I could try, if I could try to right. continue my train of thought here. Um, so, so at the minimum, you're you're look at the minimum. You look at 30 feet. It's probably the minimum that we could get right. them to bend. But you're probably looking more like 32 or 34 foot. Right. For the state, or at least no, I don't think you'd have to go more than 32. 32. 32 meets their minimum standards. All right, so you're looking at 32 feet. So the, the problem, the, I, I think, when we first started talking, and, and this is thrown back out to you, is that when we look at the 32 foot, we look at what we have for a width of the road right now. Personally, I think one, once you get onto a road, and there's no better example than Silver Lane um, on the south part of or the north part of South Silver Lane, when you drive on that, you, you hit that, and that's, how, how wide is that, Tom? By your mom's it's house. Wide. It was wide. Okay, yeah. and, and, you, and you see that, and, 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 I don't care, and I don't care where you are, but you, when you see a wide strip of asphalt, you put your foot on the accelerator and go faster. That's and, true. And, and, and we're, you, you will have your opportunity. <laughs> But so so what we were trying to do in a whole time was to try to um, calm the traffic and, and and I would think that if you're looking at a 32 foot road versus the 26 that is now I just saw more I see more asphalt and I see people going faster not slower yeah, Tom just to clarify South Silver Lane is 32 feet wide Good, thank you you're welcome Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, well, would you would you agree that when you hit there, a lot of people go faster? Absolutely. I even go faster on my bicycle. <laughs> yeah. 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 When you when, when you're drafting behind, yeah. Yeah. So the the, the farm there you go. But so so a couple things. One thing is I drove on Northfield uh, on their main street and mm. Hatfield. Hatfield's almost forty feet wide. They have a thirty-five mile hour speed limit. People don't drive fast there. And you know why? Because it's interesting and it's beautiful and they've calmed you down. And Dan has a great idea of calming down by creating sort of entrances to both ends of North and the, and the National Register District to sort of send the message that you're in a village. And if you've got lanes marked that clearly depict this is for you, Mr. Driver, and this is for you, Ms. Bicyclist, I don't think, I think that argument falls flat. I, I mean, these, there are wide roads that you don't drive fast on because you don't want to, because you're enjoying the experience. And I mean, I, it, it's true. I mean, I, I, I just don't see that that logic is, is, is valid. I think one of the things we'd have to find out from Mass DOT is what can we reduce the speed limit to to, to, to try to address that issue? And then we need to figure out how um, how much we can minimize that, um, and, and there's it's all valid, very valid points about the snow plows because especially when you get into, um, you really see that in cities too. We have that wide swath of green, so it it kind of minimizes that because the sidewalk is pushed way back. But that is a problem, um, and having to plow that is an issue too. One second. Yeah, one back. There. Was so, one question back. I guess my question is, what is reducing the speed limit do if you're not enforcing it? Sure. Well, it, obviously, you would have to couple. If you're going to reduce it, you would have to enforce it. It's or, like any or if other you road. Don't reduce it, but you enforce it. 
That's that's my question. Yep. Um, I lived in North Carolina for 10 years. I grew up up here riding my bike on the sidewalk around pedestrians when they were walking on the sidewalk. Um, I have a two-year-old child that's going to do the same exact thing, I think. I hope. <laughs> um, my wife does too. She can't be here tonight because he's sleeping. Um, we also when, when we used to drive from North Carolina to South Carolina and go to Myrtle Beach, there was a town called McBee. And every time you drove through this town, there was a finger pointing at you like a police officer, and it said, welcome to McBee, the speed limit's 30 miles an hour. And if you went 32 miles an hour, you'd get pulled over. I'm not saying that's the right thing, but I'm saying that that is how you enforce the speed limit. And that's, I mean, that's, I understand that, you know, but trucks come by my house, they're quick. Cars come by my house, they're quick. Snow plows seem like when they come by, they're pretty quick. So, but, so how do you, you can't reduce it. If you put it to 25, but don't enforce it, then it's never going to. We could put an automatic ticket in cameras. I know that probably would be a good solution. That's a little intrusive, but. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We go, go ahead. Uh, just the uh, the width of the road thing and the speed mm. of the cars. The, the one thing I would add is, is again referring to South Main Street. We're 30 feet across now. We used to be 31, 32. We've always been wider than North Main Street. We have the same speed limit. I I don't know whether there's a, more of a problem with car speeding on South Main Street than North Main Street. We are set back further from the road a little bit, so it maybe it doesn't hit us as much. North Main Street's a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm. But it's the same width. If, you, if we expanded it to 32 feet, I don't see why it would be any different than driving on South Main Street. Same I wish limit. everybody was here during all the last meetings. I know, this, I know. You know because well, it's, it's, it's how good input. You've you know. heard everybody complaining about the bumpy sidewalks, and you're trying to fix the well, bumpy sidewalks, and you've come up with a solution. That's and, one of the things I've yeah. heard lots of complaints, especially on South Main Street, about yeah. Poor sidewalks, the yeah. condition of them, yeah. and I got to expect, you know, the older, and also if you have really young kids and you're riding bikes, it's a problem. And also, no lighting. So if you want to walk at night, the lighting isn't so hot. And, the, and there's ways now to light these areas. Of course, that would have we'd have to get into power lines and things like that. But there's well, ways to the light power the areas. Lines well, yeah. that's <laughs> that. Well, that that Perfect would be a dream. Yeah, I know that you would be nice. Your hand. Sorry. Um, but, and that's one of the other issues, is ways to light these areas without casting light everywhere, you know? And I've heard that is a very big complaint a lot on, on especially on South, you know? I guess I'm a little more optimistic about the sidewalks than everyone else. I think, you know, certainly in the time we've been here, 30 years, I've never seen them come, maybe, I don't even know if they've been repaved, they have not come up. So I think if we are starting, you know, we may have a better shot. Also, I think we're, you know, if. I don't think we should be shy about asking for the exceptions. If we think having four foot bike lanes would work for bicyclists and it would, saving those two feet would make the street a little uh, calmer, let's ask for the exception if that used to be, you know, what, are, what is the harm in asking? If we I don't think, think we, we were ever shy about that. If we go to a four that. foot six sidewalk, you know, I, that, may, that may be only adding three to six inches to most of them. You know, maybe that that's an advantage over trying to add a foot. So let's ask for the exception and see. So can I ask a question about the mechanics of asking for that at this point? We have submitted a, a base design. We've got some comments back. What happens to us, our schedule and the tip, if we say, yeah, we had a bunch of people show up at a meeting finally, and we want to change it? I think you'd have to have a conversation with DOT project manager, mass DOT, to let them know that there has been feedback. And we're considering changing the design. So what's what, what's the fastest that happens? Um, hopefully they wouldn't make us do a full 25% recidental of the of the 25% design. Um, we could, the next step in the process would typically be we respond to the comments that we received and then they have their formal design public hearing where they actually come out, they moderate the hearing, they take all the feedback from the from the public. Um, that's what I'm, yeah, that's and public yep. so I mean that's that's one option is we could we could we wait to make the decision and have that hearing and not change the design prior to the hearing. And then if the you know the public 
is, is still in favor of changing that design, Mass DOT will hear that. Mm -hmm. And then we could proceed from that point. The other alternative would be to go ahead and if, if the town wants to, we could revise the design now, submit it to Mass DOT, um, get their comments before we have that public hearing. Um, that, that would delay when that public hearing takes place. But it may save you time after the public hearing. Right. You, you go directly to your 75% design, which is the next phase of design after the hearing. Right, because I, I think if it puts a little delay, but it doesn't delay it in the big scope of things and actually saves time, that might be good. Right. Did you have a question? I was just thought you might clarify what a 25% design is. So a 25% design is basically a mass DOT has uh, their process is 25% design is your first submittal to them. Um, it's basically it's showing enough detail for them to be able to understand what the project's about. You don't have all the fine grading. You don't have the real detailed engineering of the drainage, things like that yet. But it gives them more than just a concept. But it, it's, it's, you know, detailed enough so that they can understand what the project's about. And then after they approve that and you have your public hearing, then you go on to the 75% design where you give them all the details of, of the design. Then they'll review that and you go on to 100% design plans after that. And then they'll review that and then you have a final submission. And I think anybody who's been at the past meetings knows we have not been in any way shy of asking for exceptions. As a matter of fact, we've actually pushed for a number of them and we pushed back. And remember, we got to this point based on public feedback. So I'm not saying that it's right or wrong, but that's just a factual statement of where we are now. If we need to revise it, that, that's fine. Because I think we're all trying to achieve the same thing here. Safety for, and then as part of like the complete streets is thinking about which, when you look about it, at it, we've only been focusing on cars for the last since the 50s, since the Eisenhower administration. The whole thing about complete streets is addressing all forms of transportation and trying to accommodate all that. And we don't want to trash the historic nature of the town. We're trying to figure out how to do all of that at once. And it's not easy. And as you can see here, I mean, the, you know, the, the crowd of folks here vary slightly from the ones who've been in our past meetings. So we're trying to reconcile all of that. So. Uh, Please keep in mind, we have no problems with going back and doing it. We just also don't want to, like, really knock ourselves way back and then ruin where we are in the project. So it's a fine balancing act. Dan, about this, yes, yes. Just a couple questions. Is there any reason that the shared use path couldn't be reduced in width by asking for a design exception? Secondly, could the shared use path match more closely mimic the actual sidewalk? Mm. You know, in locations, does it have to be fixed five feet off the pavement? So uh, the first part of that question is, could we go with a narrower shared use path? Mass DOT is already saying that the eight feet is too narrow. We've got comments from several of the different sections saying that they think it should be 10 feet. So I don't think they're going to approve less than eight feet. That's my feeling. I don't think, no matter how much we fight that fight, I don't think we're gonna get them to approve less than eight. Um, the, uh, Trying to put the shared use path uh, back where the existing sidewalk is. Or the locations where it is. I'm not setting it five foot, you know, fixed right. distance from the road. The, the reason we went with the five feet off the road was that's the minimum. You have to be off the road. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where <laughs> these paths would have the least tree impacts. Um, if we push it further back, under most conditions, especially on the northern part, even pushing it back another foot, you're going to be impacting a lot more trees. That's why if we had to go to the 10 foot path and keep it, keep it five feet off the road, we're looking at an increase of between 12 to 20 more trees that we've been impacting. Mm -hmm. So that's why we put the path where it is, is because we were trying to limit the impact to the trees. A question about like the shared use path. I know the state has their ideas about the width of it, but I mean, we all kind of have a generic feeling about it that maybe not is based on scientific study, but what factual basis does DOT use for saying 
shared with paths path has to be this wide based on actual usage of shared paths because like we're saying most avid bikers are not going to use the shared path so in reality you've got walkers and younger children with bicycles I mean, I for the they, most part i think their their basis for the width of the path is assuming that most bicyclists would use it in this case maybe they would not <coughs> but that's where they're coming up with their their widths I mean, it's more of a question probably for them, really, but I'm, I'm curious to know what actual factual basis they base that on. One bicycle I think and it's one motorized safe, wheelchair. It's, it's basically so the pedestrians and the bicyclists can safely share that path. Mm. Well, I understand the physical yeah. I design idea, but I'm wondering what, you know, how much of that's actually used in reality. Just, just one last question. Would curving make that, as, I mean, doesn't that have a calming effect on the roads so if you put curving all the way up to at least North Silver, would that, how do you think that would affect calming? Or would that be more trouble for the bicyclist in the lane? Um, so curving, you know, has pluses and minuses. So one of the issues with adding curving is uh, drainage. Uh, right now the water is running off the road. Mm -hmm. So if you put curbing in, you've got to have catch basins all along there, you've got to pipe the water somewhere because it's all going to get collected in the gutter. Um, so the drainage, increased drainage cost. Um, the curbing probably make, if you don't have at least, you know, the five foot shoulder, then the bicyclists are going to be less comfortable with the curbing because now they're going to have to stay away from curbing and they'll be closer to the travel lane. So, you, if you're going to introduce curbing, you know, vertical curb and not just a flat berm, I think you'd have to make sure you have enough width for that lane so the bicyclist is comfortable. Oh, I, I feel like the shared use, going back to the shared use path, I think it's a model not for this situation. I think that if you were in a new development, uh, if you were in a more urban area where you really had, uh, where I could see situations where maybe it would uh, be preferable, but we got a good thing going. And so it just seems like the wrong thing in the wrong place to me. Um, my understanding is that the curbing does help with the erosion and the kind of mail trucks going up onto the grass and the kind of the thing that you, we saw in the pictures where the grass kind of doesn't grow next to the road. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people probably, you know, pull off and yes. then, then you get a gravel area in there. Um, and plowing. The curve definitely, you know, if you had a vertical curve, it would definitely help you if you're maintaining the grass beyond the curve. It would match off maybe. But I, I honestly, I didn't think about the fact that you have to put in catchment basements either, too. That's a lot, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we talked yeah. when the discussion about curbing and cyclists came up, Gary had an, an inherent nod. It was, it was, he didn't think about it. He just nodded. Like the squeeze that bicyclists feel when you're running up against a curb on your right or your left. And, and well, yeah, I, I, I bicycled a lot, and I still do. And when I'm bicycling on South Main Street, I live on Hepburn Drive, so I bicycle 47 coming up here. And I didn't do that tonight, but uh, when you get <laughs> onto South Main Street and the curbing is there, it does have a calming influence on the traffic. And I find that I'm not running up on the curbing, you know, to get away from people or whatever. I think there's enough of space there. When you start heading up on North Main Street, and there's no curb and there's a soft shoulder that is where you run off on and you can get you know um, go off the road or whatever like this I totally understand about the tra traffic calming aspect of curbing and I can definitely see it on South Main Street I'd like you to take and you know draw that into the North Main Street proposal because once again it's a calming thing, and also it ties the two streets together. You know, the look, the look and the feel. The other thing is that you're talking, putting the uh, the shared bike path or whatever. One of the pictures that uh, Lauren brought up there, just where on North Main Street, 
all the other signage that was going up between, you know, I could just imagine now, you know, bike lane, enter here, bike lane, enter there, shared bike usage. So instead of more green space, maybe you've got a full roof shop, a couple more things in there, well, a couple more signs or whatever like that. Yeah, you know, there. crosswalk coming up certainly and all this stuff. <laughs> My thing is, you're putting a lot of money into this, you're putting a lot of time into this. And the other thing is, uh, we all know power lines should go on the uh, north and south Main Street under the underground, period. The other thing th that I, I see is the fact that when you're talking about the sidewalk, you know, about the right-of-ways and what, exactly where is the borderline with a sidewalk compared to all the property owners? Is the sidewalk right now on their property? Or is it down the middle of the sidewalk? And I'm sure that if you take a look at this and say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put a 10-foot wide pedestrian pathway, you know, five feet away from the road. But you know what? We can get rid of that, but maybe you have to give us another foot on your property, wherever that is, to take and make the sidewalk back. Is that an actual question? Where does it lie? Yes, that's okay. it. I don't know. Dan, do you? Typically, it's the back edge of the sidewalk. Typically, the back edge of the sidewalk is the line. In other words, so in other words, if so I'm out, here's the sidewalk. This edge that faces me would be okay. So the back edge, the back edge is the, 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 the closest to the house. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I, I think we need to start looking at next steps here, probably. And then what our consensus is, right? I would, I, would, I, would, I would think that that's would next, you, absolutely the next step. Would you be willing to take a poll from, from the audience to see what the, the consensus in the audience is? We were hoping this was the elementary school budget yeah. <laughs> meeting, but the, the, our, our representative had to leave. He thought he, he had, maybe it was misposted. Although that is that we could tackle that at the next topic if everybody's interested. I'm curious to know how many people are in I, favor. I, 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 yeah. Personally, I'm in favor of, of what Laura's proposing because it makes most sense to me. and. Uh, I just like to know whether the large number of people here agree with that. When we when we come forward with a uh, we come forward with an appropriation request to have more engineering done on the town's <laughs> money, I hope you're all at the meeting. I would rather spend the money there than do something that was wrong. Here, here, yeah. and not used. Yeah. 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 Another topic after part section of this that I kind of see. Um, I obviously see it because my house is where that field is on the uh, oh, upper there. section. Yeah. Um, so there's a new sidewalk that will is proposed to go in there. I guess one thing I would ask is if the road's getting widened, what happens there? Because does the sidewalk then come more on our side or do we just yeah, I would not put that sidewalk in? Yeah, there's a couple <laughs> of alternatives. I mean, one thing. We could look at if the sidewalk might have to move further back, closer to your right. to your house, or no, I, the other alternative would be to put the sidewalk right against the road with a vertical curb, so there's no buffer between the sidewalk yeah. in that section. I mean that's so, that's something that yeah. that doesn't sound like a pleasant alternative from the yeah. feedback I've heard here. No, yeah. and, and I'm not opposed to it being in my front yard. I don't mind that. It's just the idea that there isn't one there now, so it's what's I guess I'm bringing that up because the house north of me that nobody lives at isn't going to be here <laughs> complaining about that either um, <laughs> so I'm just bringing that up for that reason I see I see one question and then you will yep Bye. Uh, before we all leave which I assume will be fairly soon I do want to thank you for making this presentation I want to thank the select board for giving us the opportunity to meet and hear about this and to discuss it. I think that the concerns that have been raised here are excellent. Uh, the historic nature of the town and safety for everyone and the whole sense of community that we share here. And I want to leave you with one little story uh, that came from my neighbor across the street, Steve Benjamin. Uh, he watched the snowplow coming down South Main Street, and the snowplow jumped the curb, went up onto the green, and took out my mailbox and sent it flying. So, you know, there are problems here. It didn't happen every day. It happened once. But I think there was a period of about four years that my snow 
in my mailbox was taken out year after year. Maybe it was a game they were playing to see how many <laughs> mailboxes they could take out that year. But you know, this does happen. Yeah, I, I've lost one over the years as well, so, well. I kind of was just going to echo, now I'm going to echo what uh, Craig just said, and I was going to say that I, I wanted to thank you guys for responding to the concerns that people have had prior to tonight, you know, and all the work that the engineers had done to create this visualization. You know, we complain, you guys presented us with a, with a solution, and we wouldn't have been able to see it if you hadn't done it, and it's a way of getting to the end. And I, I don't know how much work you guys do, and I appreciate it. Okay. Nobody has all appreciate it. Nobody ever said democracy is being free. I'd like to say thank you for all of you for coming out, too, because I know how busy everybody's schedule is. And you know, it takes a while to hammer through these things, yeah. you know? We could be like other countries and just railroad stuff through, but that's not our, that's not what we do here, so. So if, I, if I could, Mr. Chair, we're yes, going to collate all this input, which is, which is relatively narrow in its total scope, and then uh, get a price from CHA about what this may or may not, uh, may or may not entail. And uh, from there, uh, announce our next agenda item at another meeting in the future. Well, can you sum up what we heard? I got a whole yeah. bunch of notes. Everybody <laughs> hates the shared pathway. It's too yes. wide. Well, it can't, it's got to drain. I understand what they hate. Right. That was that was probably within the first two minutes. But <laughs> you, you have to ask what is acceptable. Sure. Yes. And I heard. Wait a second. What I heard is that the group assembled here would not be adverse to a road that's 32 feet wide. That seems I think we'd like you to consensus. ask. We'd like to ask for to exceptions to make it narrower, but that, we will that's accept. The four, that's actually accept. with the four. That's with the four foot. Okay. That's exception, because you're 11, 22, Two right? And eight. Is, that's thirty. We are in historic district, and so I was wondering if you had experience with exceptions made to roadway when traveling in historic district. Mm -hmm. uh, are we actually a full-on historic district? Yeah, national we'll register. National we'll register, but are we a historic we're district? Not a local, we're okay. a national. Okay, because right. we want to make sure there that are differences. That's, yeah, because there are differences. Highway. Right, the scenic we're byway. Scenic, that's correct. We're a Massachusetts so, and a national byway. Right. We're both. So, back to me. We've got to try to understand, because we're going to get together once, we have to understand what we're looking for. Right, what I'm So, I had heard, and, and I may be wrong, but the, I believe the consensus was tra uh, travel way plus bike of 32 feet. 30 to 32. <laughs> but yeah. that wouldn't be a problem. We're trying to be right? right? For 30. Yeah. Sidewalks, yeah. sidewalks yeah. in the same location. I think that with the sidewalks in the probably. same location. Right. I'm saying that so that Sherry can write that in the minutes. Right. So that we have Thank a point of discussion, <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, going forward. Yep. Yeah. Is that what I hear? Yes. yes. All right. Peter? So just to be clear, is the current roadway between the yellow line and the white line, in other words, the Fog car line. travel lane, is that 11 feet or 12 feet? What's the, what's the, what's the, what's the state law call for for a road like this? Mascio's minimum is 11 feet. So 11 feet there yeah. plus a four foot bike lane yeah. times two is a 30 foot road. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, but you might have to go with a five foot. I mean, no, hang on a second. The road, if you recreate the road, the roadway part, right. not the bike part, if you recreate the road part, that takes up two times 11 is 22 feet. Okay. And if you could get, you could get to 30 feet total, which I think is getting more back than something that yeah. you guys were pushing for, yeah. okay, by adding a four foot bike lane. And I'm only one biker, but yeah. God, if we had a four foot bike line there, I'd be just. <laughs> You'd be a little happy? You'd just do circles right there. Yeah, I'd mean, stay yeah. right on that road. <laughs> there you go. Peter, Peter, you have to take into account the width of the stripes. Right, so you probably so you have another foot. Yeah. So a ten, uh, an 11, a 10 foot road is really like 10 and a half feet. Okay. 
Okay, so because now we're the, the stripes take up a certain amount of space. And I believe it was Tom, too, that mentioned, too, we do have to remember farm equipment and the farm equipment that does go up and down there now. Because we, we, can't, we can't narrow it and then constrict that because then if we do that, then we'll be, you know, equipment might not be able to get up and down that, and then we'll have a different group in here complaining about the width of the road. So we got to just try to balance all that out. And, yes? I know sometimes the bike lane is painted green. You yes. know, and then you have the bikes, and it seems to me, like when I see that, I notice more that it's a bike lane rather than just kind of a shoulder. Yep. And is that something and that you just like, yeah, like you throw in the green paint? We we discussed that a number of times in a number of different markings, and you'll see a lot of different markings. And one of the things about dealing with this over the last five years is I pay a lot more attention to intersections, traffic, and I think I think he's gone now. But Dan had a question about whether curbing. Um, has an effect on slowing down, and, and we've seen a number of pins. I actually spent time reading an entire study on removing curbing and and the and easing transitions in Europe because they're finding that that actually does the complete opposite. It actually makes people slow down mm. and pay more attention when mm. the delineations aren't so crystal clear because, and I think they made the argument that if you have crystal clear delineations, people will just bomb along it, whereas if it's unsure, the human mind stops to think, to cognate, and look at, ooh, where am I going? I better make sure I'm on the road. So it's, it's very interesting. There's a lot of different things that are going on about that. But um, we, have, we had discussed that. And I think the only one of the bigger concerns is we just have to make sure that if we're going to mark that and paint it all green like that, we have to make sure we like the look of it, for one thing. But um, there's other ways to mark it with bicycle with the bicycle symbols and things like that that I've seen and we just have to make sure that we budget for that for road maintenance and we have to make sure that that's going to be another thing that we'll have to pay you know and it's all it's just all things to keep in mind I want to see Peter doing I do too. Yeah, this <laughs> is more foot lane, and, and unfortunately, this doesn't address the other issue where we talked about farther above that. Maybe that'll be another tip project someday. But that is, and I know Peter's mentioned that for a long time. That is a concern. I've but. always proposed speed holes. <laughs> speed holes. Speed holes. Just put them in there. I, I just know one thing. When when starting way back, people residents would come and ask that we pave the road because they're dirt. Sunland doesn't have any dirt roads now. Um, and, and we always would say, we'd recommend, well, we do have a couple, but there's very few. But we, we, we would always say, be careful what you ask for, because yeah. <laughs> if, if you pay the road, then you're going to be complaining about the speed that people go. And, and I will tell you, without exception, we've had people come back and tell us that it was better before it was paved. So I, I, I just, we'd rather take care of the, we'd rather, we'd rather have dust than, than people going past our house fast, so. How does it? Well, I was going to say, how does the, how does the DOT feel about I, that? I thought, would that be an I thought the worst thing when, when I saw when George brought up they were going to pay forty seven north. I said, well, there go, there goes the neighborhood because people go faster. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it's smooth, their car doesn't bump, and the people go faster. And you got a lot more truck traffic on that part because people are taking yes. a shortcut. Yep. From ninety one over to Route two east. Yep. Yeah, I've heard it, that a lot. And, yeah. and, and the weight check. Yep. The weight station and. And, 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 and one comment to what Jonathan said earlier about the policing of, of the road. Um, the other thing that we find out when neighborhoods come in complain about speed, and we, we ask the police to do uh, radar patrols and step up patrol. Mostly residents. Most of the time they're handing out um, uh, notices to people that live within a half, three quarters of a mile. <laughs> I'm not saying you go by my house fast, Jonathan, but, <laughs> but, but um, and, and I would also say one, one of the problems on, on North Main Street and South Main Street is a, is the volume of traffic, and, and just to maybe disagree a little bit with Liz, um, on that when you, go, when you go through Hatfield, Hatfield doesn't have the, the, the amount of traffic that we have, and I think what happens is if you get behind someone that's doing 45 when it's 35 and Sunderland, you'll pull up to that guy, so you go faster also. I, I just, I, I, it's, I think that the, the, num, the, the cars and the number of cars that come on that road is, is much higher than it was 15 years ago. And I don't, I don't know why, um, but, but I, I, know, I know if you sit at the South Main Street lights, and, and you get tied up there. I didn't, I didn't know there was that many cars that used 
South Main Street. And and but now you go you go there. There there's some nights that you you could sit there through three or four. Right. I I don't understand that, but because I never thought there were that many cars that that use that. So. so thirty to thirty-two feet. Just a couple more quick questions. Yeah. One quick question, and I apologize that this was covered. Does the DOT have standards of <coughs> widths of sidewalks? Mm -hmm. They do. The minimum sidewalk is five feet. They have standards on everything. <laughs> we, we can. Bike lane. Just bikes, not shared. Was there another question? I thought I saw another hand. I saw Mass DOT has a roundabout design, a preliminary design. Yeah. Just how that ties into this and all the traffic. Different project. It's actually a whole separate thing that they're looking at. I, and I know when you step back and look at the big space, how it links, but that's not tied to so, this project. Okay. So, so, is there a status on that? No, I know it's not. We haven't heard anything it's official. official. There's no funding. Yeah. Right, there's no funding. Listed, but not funded. That was something that they looked at, and I think they approved, like, like a potential use of that design, right? And I think that was the last we heard from that, so. So, on, on continue. So, so John, on, on when you get back down towards the uh, the intersection of School Street right here, is is there any way is there any way we, we can narrow that down a little bit? At School Street, Tom. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the pavement. It, 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 yeah. yeah. Is there anything it, anything we can do there to to narrow? Because it seems like there's a lot of it's tough to pull out of there. Let's let's put it like. Yeah. Well, they're put. It looks like there's some grass right there. We are doing this bump out here to separate the intersection from the parking. That's part of our. Yeah, I was just wondering if there's something if we could narrow that down. Um, yeah. So I, we can look at yeah. and, and, and I and I still side? and I and I don't know what hap, what has to happen in front of uh, the blue heron, but that's that's we we were going to add <coughs> a sidewalk, right? We added a sidewalk. Yeah, there's a sidewalk along. And but going across going across road right in that area, did we add a sidewalk there across also? Walk. A crosswalk. A crosswalk. Sorry, crosswalk. Isn't the crosswalk at 120? Yeah, here. Closer to the 120. Oh, right. Huh? Right. Closer to 120, North Main. Right. right. Yeah, because well, yeah, we want, we thought crosswalk, a couple of crosswalks across the road may help slow it down also. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, if, if, pe if there are different, more places right. for people to cross. Right. So, I guess, you know, if we get rid of the shared use path, we'd have to look at whether we still wanted a crosswalk here. Well, that, that would still be, a, I, I kind of think that would be, because we have a senior housing that's going in right, right in that area. So well, that would be nice if they if we left kind of left something like there so that they could cross the road right there to get on that other side yeah. so, and, and 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 then you could walk up once you could walk up then down the other side and cross back over so that that access to 120 should really be in this plan because that's going to be an in and out kind I, of. I agree with that Lauren sure but I, I, I but wouldn't you agree about a sidewalk yeah, or I think not, it would but be a, a crosswalk in that area. You gotta have one. Ju there. Just, just because of the, I mean, you have potentially what 28 units, 32 right. units inside there. And, and it, it, even just for the existing people who park right. across right. the street and go to the Blue Heron, you need, you know, for that, would that, that be traffic. Part of the there. Comprehensive permit process could be requiring a crosswalk. It, it could be sure. So. It could be. Yeah, we definitely want that. We address it then. <laughs> So the next steps more specifically are then you guys are going to have another meeting on this or? We're going to collate all of this input, get it to him. He's going to give us a price. Price for revising the plan? Yep. And then, like you mentioned, then one of the next steps will be a meeting, like a full-on hearing with meeting. our friends at the Mass DOT meeting. So meeting. 20, so Everyone, the DOT meeting. <laughs> we'll send out a mail. I think we're going to have to see what I don't think we're at the point of recommending anything. We're going to have to see what we can do and what will work and what we can get away with in terms of exceptions and things like that. So I think we're kind of back at the fact finding design stage at this point. I mean, it may be worth it. May worth, may worth trying to set up a meeting and ask you if you can see what ahead of time. 
before we start right. anything. Because any kind of homework that we can do beforehand, rather that doesn't that keeps things moving along, <coughs> would be would be good. Can we can we can we post the digital resources that have been generated online prior to the meetings? I went on the website, saw the announcement of the meeting, so we created yep. a link that showed me the cross sections and the, these, these illustrations are great, but I'd love to have a chance to study. To look at them online? We get that, the we get that up before like Yeah, as long as we have everything sent to us, yeah. yeah. If you guys can send them, you know, ahead of, in ahead of yeah. any meetings we have, yeah. As soon as we get them ready, we can send them. Uh -huh. Next agenda. Thank you very thanks. Much. Thank you. Right. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. I'll ask him. We'll get with John tomorrow and see if we get a meeting here. That would make sense because then if they are going to adjourn for five minutes or ask them to clear the room. Excuse me, excuse me, could, could folks please step outside of the room because we do have a meeting going on still, please. Thank you. Okay, you want your gavel, right? Right. Uh, we have a lot of Yes. We, we don't have any minutes? Yes. Excuse me, could everyone please move out outside? Take your questions and conversations outside, please. Thank you. Go, David. Minutes. Yeah. Okay, uh, we'd like to approve our minutes for 12, 11 27 17. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Board of Selectmen updates. Pass. Um, Anything exciting? We just, we're going to, Capital Improvement Committee met last week and we're going to bring forward here a uh, recommendation for a uh, contract with uh, Roy Brown for the building's assessment. Okay. And uh, the architect came in last week, met with the group. It was a good meeting. We uh, also, Sherry investigated another. Um, agency that took out uh, plans as well, did some work in the town of Hadley, but um, if, if, there was a, if there was any question about the Roy S. Brown and Associates skill set, uh, those were uh, relieved after our meeting. So okay. we're bringing that name forward and we have that money set aside as part of an annual appropriation. We'd like to move forward with that. And it's, uh, it, was a, it was a unanimous vote of the Capital Improvement Committee. Okay. I'd like to, as a as a as a presentation, the <coughs> after the presentation, it was unanimous to bring that name forward to the board. So okay. to enter into a contract, I'd like to move that we, uh, the town of Sunland, enter into uh, contracted services based on the RFQ uh, that was sent out uh, with Roy S. Brown for our buildings assessment and capital needs study. Okay. Have a second. That was the longest motion I've ever heard you say, Mr. I know. I, I'm going to check the minutes <laughs> next week, too, and make sure it's I, all I can't wait to see this written up in the minutes. Uh, it be great. Second. Okay. Well, wait. Second. Yes. Second. There you go. I, I could... Any discussion? Do we want to discuss that <laughs> yeah. some more? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Three to zero. Um, the only update I have is the personnel committee met last week. We all got binders of homework. Nice. We have binders full of... Um, positions <laughs> that we're reviewing now so because we're trying to one of the things that we're trying to keep in mind too as we go through this um, because one of the things that we've discovered 
other than salary too, and we were, well, let me step back. We're trying to take in total compensation into the view because one of the things that um, we have to consider is the percentage of medical that we pay versus uh, our peers. Yeah, so, yeah. because while well, we're trying to we're trying to take all of that into consideration so that we're not just focusing on solely on salary. Mm -hmm. um, for either side because you know we look at it we're actually the next to the last in terms of what we pay in terms of medical so sometimes that has more especially these days mm. can have a little more of a bearing than you know well bumping up a position's pay by a, you know a small percentage or whatever so we're trying to take a look at that and we're and also we're trying to which has been an interesting challenge is getting you know we've got okay here's our peer towns we think we've ironed that out now it's like okay We've got to compare the positions because sometimes oh, you'll right. find, you know, job description A does vary quite a bit in terms of what is sense. done in each town. Um, so, yeah, we've seen that even in our tenure here, where they, they kind of assume some extra responsibility of people that have left, and yeah, right. and just saying, yeah, correlating that could be fun. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, the only thing I didn't see on your wage survey yeah. is I didn't see on the positions if that was if those were. Um, salaried positions or if they were hourly, hourly positions time. and I didn't notice if, yeah. if that included overtime you know it's, I think as we go through the positions I think mm -hmm. we'll have to see if we have that in there because that was one of the things we talked about because I know yeah. some some for instance some places um, some employees get overtime right town clerk may town clerk has I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. just using town just clerk to put, yeah. town clerk may get overtime to do voter registration you yeah. know, because that's usually on a Thursday or Friday night. Right. Right. They have to stay open to eight o'clock. Well, they get overtime or some type of compensation for that. So I was just wondering if the the salary review included that type of compensation as well. Yeah, as we're well. trying we're trying to look at all that right because you have to weight that in. You, you know, you know what yeah. I mean. You can't you can't just look at it and assume. Oh, okay. Well, somebody's getting sixty five thousand dollars a year. But is that included? Is that including work? Right. Right. Outside the normal. Right, because if you've got two positions that are the same, but one of them also, and they're paid the same, but one of them has the potential for overtime, then that position has essentially more pay assigned. It could. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, yeah. And one of the other things that we have to do is break the sal salaries down to hourly rates because mm. yeah. different towns, different yes. positions work different hours. So yes. how do you compare salaries if? Hmm. Um, right, if so it's not the same there's hours. There's that piece of it too. And we've found that a lot. I think I think the the one where we see that a lot is the library, mm -hmm. where there seem you know you'll have a, 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 a labeled position. Too, yeah. yeah. Yep. So there's a lot. To, there's a, yeah, really there's a lot, lot to, to consider, about. and this is why I keep poking at other groups in the area that it would be great if they kind of would provide a service for this. But that's a whole other thing. And, with that, we do have the uh, uh, yes. proposal from Burkhog <laughs> for a shared HR. Yeah, that's right. Excellent segue into the next yeah. topic. So, what would that would that would entail? That's what shared HR. Well, there's a quite a bit that it would or could entail. I think right now we're trying to figure out what what people want, what people want, how many hours, what they want to pay. Um, did you see the? Yeah, I'm looking at the did bulleted you, did list talk, here. Did you talk to the schools? Um, not yet that I'm aware of, but that was brought up at one of the meetings is getting the schools to share in the costs schools, of this program. Of and FERCOG yeah. is actually looking to um, have someone come in and do HR for them as well. So I think it's still um, a project that's in the works. And not because we've talked about that in the past too, is <coughs> sharing HR with the schools. Initially when the town administrators met with the COG too, we um, were going to move it forward as a regionalization project, um, but the COG decided to uh, move forward with an emergency preparedness regional yep. mm -hmm. um, project. So um, we're going to try to do it as a kind of a pilot project and see how the first year went with maybe community compact funding. Mm -hmm. And then, if the towns wanted to buy into it after, um, I and again, I, I don't have a problem with it. I just look if you include the schools, which mm -hmm. you should. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you how does that handle, you know, the first couple the first couple of weeks of August, 
or the last couple of weeks of August right. and the first couple of weeks of September when right. you're having changeover right. and, you're, and you're bringing all the, I don't know how you would do that on the large scale, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, there, and there's a lot to the HR position. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and you look at all the personal bylaws between this, the towns. All the different towns, right. Yep. I, I, it'd be very difficult. I think it, I think it's a worthwhile position. I just don't understand how you would do it. How yeah, that different that towns have to be are amazing. looking for different. <laughs> Right. So this is this is a draft right now of, yeah, and of the, a <coughs> conceptual, <coughs> right? Yeah. This is the concept. Interesting. Sort of a market. They're <coughs> surveying their market essentially and finding trying to tailor products to meet the market need. I need to save that. Okay. Okay. So a little fun reading for us in, yeah. in the future, right? Um, we come to our public comment. Any public comments? I just have one question that I was a minimal question, and that is how long it takes to put the minutes up online. It's like a minute. And a, it's been a month and a half to two months, it seems. Oh, they're, they're and they're not online. Okay. Usually it's the yeah. Upon, usually upon, next upon, day. Upon, yeah. upon usually okay. upon approval. Yeah. No, I mean the most recent one that's up there now is like mid October. Really? Yeah. Yeah. We we'll get okay. right on that. Thanks, Peter. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll check on that. I, I didn't know. If, I don't know if you wait until the board approves them, and maybe there's a delay there. No, once they're approved, they usually go up. Yeah, they should be going up the next day. But I'll check on that. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good point. Uh, and then we have new business: an appointment to a representative Frontier Regional Repair Subcommittee. No takers on that. So we advertise this online. We reached out to some people, and no takers. Um, do they have a date that they need the please respond by December 8th? Yeah. They do have a date. And today is the 11th. Uh, um, I could do it, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Chair. I could do it for a little while. Okay. And maybe we can swap off. Okay. So if, if it's all right, I'll frog over the board. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll represent the town for this. Okay. Thank you, Scott. The original, the original concept working group at one point, way back. So, okay. You can put my name forward, Sherry. Thank you. Okay. And then we have our annual winter road closing list, which we go through every year at this time of the year. <coughs> um, Shall we go through our sure. list? Yeah. All right. Um, this is to the board from George Emery, our highway superintendent, dated December 6th. Please be advised that the following roads or portions of the following roads are not maintained in the winter. This list does not reflect a change from last year's recommendations. So meaning we're doing the same recommendations that we recommended last year. Hubbard Hill Road from house number two easterly to the Leverett line. Gun Cross Road from route 47 westerly to Falls Road. Whitmore Cross Road from Route 47 westerly to Falls Road. Reservation Road from House Number 40 easterly to Route 63. Cemetery Road from Sagala's Driveway to Riverside Cemetery. Middle Mountain Road from House Number 10 to Mount Toby. <coughs> Reservoir Road from the Reservoir Easterly to Mount Toby. Clark Mountain Road, excuse me, Clark Mountain Road <coughs> from House Number 42 <coughs> easterly to Mount Toby. Gun Mountain Road from House Number 23 Easterly to North Mountain Road. Cross Mountain Road from House Number 28 Northerly to Middle Mountain Road. Ferry Road Westerly to the Connecticut River. Ferry Road at Williams Property from Route 47 Westerly to the Connecticut River, because there's not just one ferry road. Every road that went to a ferry was Ferry Road. <laughs> uh, let's see, North Mountain Road from the intersection of Claybrook Road Northerly to Mount Toby. Mount Toby Tower Road from Reservation Road to the Fire Tower. Reservoir Road from the Reservoir Easterly to the point of termination. Respectfully submitted, George Emery. And that's our motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And that, I think, is the end of all our official <coughs> items on our list for the evening. Unless anybody has any other. I would just remind everybody that we. Uh, You'll never see Sangal Nun 
TV about on street parking because we have a bylaw that says basically from November 1st to April 1st, April 1st. not supposed to park on the side of the street. So I would just remind everyone that um, don't park on the streets from November 1st to April 1st because you are subject to ticketing and towing. That's right. I think, I think we do have little signs, signs at up. the entry yep, and we points do. for the towns. Yep, but that's an excellent reminder, especially with our next snowfall coming. Here it comes. Or snow mush or whatever it is. <coughs> so, um, Okay, and, and our next meeting will be Monday, December 18th, and that will be our last meeting because the next scheduled meeting would fall on Christmas Day, and I don't think we're going to be here for that. So we have so. licenses next week? Licenses I think so, yeah. and the joint appointment for the school committee vacancy. I keep pointing at you, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> you got, have you, did you get my letter to did, thank sure. you. Yeah. And thank you for that. Yes. It's, it's, it's the only greatly appreciated. I hope it I mean, I'm interested. So. Two thirds of the battle, right there. Just, just that yeah. interest alone. But we need more of that around. <laughs> um, can, I, can I ask one other question? I forgot. Yeah. I no, that's um, and that is just up on North Mountain Road. There's lobbying going on. You aware of that? Mm. No, actually, I'm not. And it's a and the road is a disaster. Mm. I don't know if. Huh. The highway department was involved in the first part of that because they came in, somebody came in, I'll say at least a month ago, but not as much as two months ago, and dropped a bunch of whatever you call it, like river gravel or something. It's like, you know, almost the size of baseballs or something, the round kind of gravel or something like that, on a few of the normally places where there are mud holes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I mean, it's, it was all sort of weird, and then they've had the and I didn't know if that was part of a t town plan to improve the road or whatever, mm. or you know maybe it was done by this logging outfit because they're now, I mean the road is torn up something awful, mm. and I didn't know if that's something I know it's a public I mean it's a town road, yeah. and I didn't know whether that's something that you know North, North, North Mountain Road North Mountain you go up North you go up North Mountain it's just a little ways and there's a you go. Uh, like a couple quick turns and there's some ledges on the right hand yeah, side yeah. and then you get up a little rise and it's a flat area and there's a place they've like a, a log depot they've got yep, on the left there okay. and then going up beyond that I mean they've just torn the you know it's just you know you can't hardly even walk up there now. Interesting. You want to have Sherry so look into that? George. Sherry can we ask George to take her? Mm -hmm. And also I would check with Kurt too because I remember when I was on the Conservation Commission we would get copies of logging uh, plans right so that, that that might be another place to check too because they do have to file with the, at least notify the conservation commission even though and, and, if, and if that's all private activity is there's some you know deal for them to restore it when they're done mm -hmm. good point yeah that's right. it's, it's important you know, in addition to the fact that you know there's certainly been times when if one had to access that road couldn't do it sure yeah. and you know, unless, you're, unless you're in one of these things with you know, bulldozer treads on it because that's what they've been running up and down there. Right. So, uh, that would be my guess why those stones were probably put in the holes for their equipment, I bet. Right, but I'm guessing that maybe, I don't know if they put them in or if we put them in or. Sure. Fine. We, we also it. have a uh, um, the multi year plan that was submitted by UMass for their foresting, yeah. forest management, and it may we may want to dust that off and see just where we are yeah. with that. Take a look at that. That's anyway, good point. thanks for the tip, Peter. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Can we have George's response for next week, please? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sherry. Sure. Hope we'll have an answer for next week. I just didn't know if you were aware of it. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, do you want to have anybody have a motion to adjourn, or we can we'll yeah. round off at the half hour? I'll, I'll second them. <laughs> I'll second his motion to adjourn. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.